Yes. Okay, right. I'm talking to Art Goose of uh, Synopsis. Hello, Art. Hello. So we're here at uh, Synopsis Snug 2023 in uh, Santa Clara, and Art gave a very, uh, very nice keynote this morning, uh, launching uh, Synopsis AI, but also talking about the convergence of AI and um, multi-die and many other things. So uh, let's go back uh, to when you launched Synopsis Art okay. um, in the 80s. AI was considered you know, fairly futuristic. Uh, did you ever imagine you'd be launching an AI-driven EDA suite under your leadership 36 years later? Oh, you know, at that time, uh, the term AI was not uh, you know, commonplace at all. Interestingly enough, the, the first synthesizer we had at that time had an expert system in it, which was considered AI, except the problem was you added more rules, it got better, you added more rules, it got better, you added one more rule, and it wouldn't work anymore. And, and since then, of course, the evolution has been much later, as the first AI showed up uh, really with uh, beating the chess game, but ultimately the Go game. Uh, was for me the breakthrough because suddenly I could see that you could have deductive reasoning and uh, uh, pattern matching coming together. And that is of immense value to us. And so that is really uh, where we started to invest fully because we saw an impact on what we were doing. And uh, today, are there any areas of the design and development stack that you think are still unexplored and where AI could still be applied. I'm sure there must be plenty, but uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, we've had you quoted in the NVIDIA you know, press release on computational lithography. You, you talked, I think, uh, earlier about uh, refactoring designs uh, to older or newer process technologies. Tell me, where, where, where do you think it still has to go? Well, for, for starters, I think we've just touched the surface. I think we've gotten some fantastic results in a number of areas, be it uh, actually uh, the design part, now verification, the test, you mentioned lithography. But even there, I think we have so much, so much more that, that we can do. And so, uh, from my perspective, this, this automation of entire design flow pieces is just at its beginning. And you know, I, I see full employment for the next two decades to, to broaden this. But if you want to have a, a, an example of something that uh, I think there's, there's potential, you know, we've done a number of um, uh, analog optimizations mm. and moving from one technology node to another, for example, retargeting chips. In the digital area is a great, great opportunity. If you change, you have a chip that's doing well with the customer but you want to have some changes you make the changes for another customer and the whole thing will recreate itself automatically at this point in time so retargeting to new technologies or change designs absolutely possible and in the works uh, another big area in the industry it's in the semiconductor industry not just EDA is a talent shortage and um, you know chips are yeah inevitably getting more complex um, how will we, the industry, be able to get uh, the skills to develop not uh, just the, the chips, but the EDA tools uh, for that? I mean, you talked earlier about architects having it all up in their brain. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, where are we going to get those brains of tomorrow? Well, you know, th this has been a quest forever, right? Because uh, since the beginnings of, of semiconductors, we've been on this exponential quest. And by definition, how can you ever keep up with an exponential? But we did. We did, and, and, and those advances are possible because uh, people learned and learned and applied new techniques and so on. And so we've been able technically to keep up very well with the, the moving horizon. And I expect for the next 20 years with the combination of AI and, and multi-die, we will be able to succeed. That doesn't mean that there's not a opportunity for many new employments of people that are coming out of school. They will have to learn quite a bit, but, but the fundamentals of physics, of electronics, of computer science to just take three, and maybe some of the new AI uh, techniques, they will apply to our field. And so uh, the fact that simultaneously between now and, and uh, 2030 or so, the semiconductor industry will double from about half a trillion to a trillion. That means there's a lot of money to be spent. So, you know, when, when you decide what, what to do in college and you feel that yeah, you're technically inclined and you want to have an impact on the future of mankind, this is a great field to be in. What a great message. Um, talking uh, about um, generative AI and ChatGPT, which is in the news, we're already getting to higher levels of abstraction in the design uh, design flow and also you know like do you think uh, with the process technologies with multi-die do you think yeah we'll get to a point where we can do a complex chip design using uh, generative AI 
Well, you know, we are generative EDA. Uh, in many ways, from, from the early, the, literally the, the beginning is of synopsis, which was to synthesize something that before was done manually uh, by humans, is a form of generation. And the question is always, anybody can generate anything, does it work? That's the question. And of course, you have functional, functional correctness, you need to have speed, you need to have area, you need to have power, you have many, 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 many constraints. And when I say many, many, in the early days it was three or four, now it's trillions of constraints to make a, a, a circuit work. And so the, the automation of that is possible if one simultaneously has the analysis tools and the capabilities to assess how good is something. And that is actually very, very difficult. That requires very deep technology. And the reason it, it takes a company like Synopsys to do this is we have all of these tools that can assess the design, and then we put essentially a brain that drives the search into uh, the space while using the best tools to assess where you really are. And that is not just generative uh, uh, AI. It, it requires way, way, way more than that. I think that goes into the Sysmore concept that you were talking about. Absolutely. You know, uh, I, I think uh, uh, we've had the benefit of 60 year plus of Moore's Law, which was really this uh, observation that turned into a, 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 a prediction, to a guideline, to an obsession maybe, to the law of exponential evolution in semiconductors. And I think it characterizes really the, the gestalt or the essence of, of our industry and the industry that has had the biggest uh, evolution in the history of mankind. Well, while the traditional Moore's law has slowed down, we're still building smaller and smaller transistors, not just as rapidly. A new door has opened, and the door is, don't think of one chip, think of multiple chips in super high proximity, either right next to each other on another chip, or it, it, uh, over time more and more stacked on top of each other with very, very fine connectivity. Well, that suddenly opens a whole horizon for the next uh, two decades, I would think, mm. and uh, we like to call that SysMore, meaning systemic complexity, but with a Moore's Law exponential ambition. And, and it is sort of uh, you know, a, a touching moment with Gordon Moore having little, literally passed away uh, last week. Mm. But uh, I love the fact that we maintained the, the, the Moore name as the person that really was our exponential coach. You know, the, it became a law, but, but there was no question, hey, we're engineers, we're going to abide by, by that law, and we will continue to do that. Excellent. That's good. Um, let's go to a final question. So. Um, I would like to understand, you know, what do you think in your career has been the most significant in the EDA industry, or maybe just generally, uh, I know you've got music as your other passion, which is my yes. passion as well, by the way. Um, what would you envision uh, as, well, sorry, what was the most impact? And then what's, what's also coming, what's the next, next big breakthrough opportunity? Well, you know, the, the, the impact obviously is that we were part of the design in contrast to the, the manufacturing technology. And, and uh, first, great, great credit, of course, to the people that have developed the technologies to make things smaller and smaller. And as they became smaller, there were more and more of them. And so we are part of the more and more of them. They are part of the, the smaller and smaller. And at some point in time, the designing very sophisticated things demanded uh, a degree of, of initially verification and ability to just assemble, but then demanded automation. And actually, the, there happens to be a watershed uh, that, that coincides pretty much with the exact timing of synopsis coming about. Before, it was called computer-aided design, CAS. Yes. After that, it was called electronic design automation automation uh, and and we're still questing for that uh, and I think that synopsis contribution was that uh, it helped change digital design and because of the simplifications of digital versus analog mix signal it was able to stay on this exponential that that always looked impossible and always did get executed now if you look forward this is why I love the fact that, that we're moving from the classic more to now the SysMore, because the SysMore says we're opening new doors that before were techonomically not viable. Technically not, it was too difficult to, to make multiple chips come super close together on top of each other, next to each other, economically because it was too difficult to manufacture. Both of those have changed. And you can see it now because we have well over 100 people doing multi-die uh, designs. And so with that opens a whole new horizon 
that needs just as much automation and analysis as before. And uh, our job will be to stay on the Moore's expectation of ex exponential uh, advances. And I think these are badly needed for the world because we have a lot of problems that will need to be solved. Anything that touches energy needs to be solved. And you, we will take some compute energy ourselves to get there, but uh, it's a great opportunity. You talked about compute per watt, and I think that's quite an important part of it. Yeah, you know, there, uh, actually, I picked up uh, an interesting comment by um, uh, François Pierre-Noël from Mercedes, who said that for every 100 watts of computation, it reduces for electric car the range by 10 to 15 miles. That is a great economic yeah. statement, mm -hmm. right? Be, because suddenly you become very sensitive. Well, I like 200 watts because then my autonomous driving is going to be better and safer, but 10 to 15 miles less, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you do now? Those are the trade-offs. Optimization is all about that. Well, Art, thank you very much. Thank you for the interest. Okay. Yes, that switched off.